All right, let's try to make sense of these no, new COVID developments. Joining me now is Dr. Kevin Sneed with the University of South Florida College of Pharmacy. Welcome as always, Dr. Sneed. Let's talk about this new study putting some doubt on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. First of all, who did this study? Because that's what we want to know, right? Who's doing the study and should you be concerned? Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. It's very important to understand this particular study was not conducted by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, it was conducted by researchers at the University of in, in, in New York. And what they did, they really took uh, what we call antibody titers from multiple people and, and compared them against the three currently available vaccines. And in their particular study, they did find that right now the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, was only 30% effective against Delta and 60% effective after two doses. Um, and, and, and the other vaccines on with BioNTech, Pfizer, and Moderna did perform much better. Now we have to keep in mind, these studies have not been peer reviewed just yet. It's an early release article, uh, but it does kind of fall in line with probably some other studies and, and surveillance we've you know, seen around the country and around even around the world. And so right now, we just have to kind of lend credence to the fact that there may be a little bit of an efficacy issue when you compare Johnson & Johnson to the messenger RNA vaccines. So in other countries, they've been combining vaccines. Do you think that could happen here? And do you think that's a good idea for people who are now nervous because they got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Well, the very first thing I want to mention is that Johnson & Johnson from the very beginning has already had a clinical trial going on with a two-shot strategy. Many people are not aware of that unless you were in the actual clinical trial. Uh, I do not uh, personally anticipate that the FDA will uh, make a sudden shift without current data to support uh, going from uh, uh, what we call the adenovector vaccines, uh, Johnson & Johnson, to uh, a second shot of the um, messenger RNA vaccines, although we are indicating around the world that uh, it has been effective at producing a very strong antibody response. So as of right now, for people that are a little bit nervous about Johnson & Johnson, we're just going to say um, hang tight for right now. The FDA and the Advisory Council uh, for uh, Immunological Practices is reviewing all the data, and we should have a response here pretty soon. Is there any uh, drawbacks or downsides that we know of? I mean, if you did get the J&J &J and then you say, you know what, I'm still going to go ahead and get another vaccine. Are there any potential side effects or long-term issues that we need to be concerned about? Well, you know, Laverne, you're asking a very important question because right now we have not done a clinical trial that will confirm what would happen if that were to occur. Uh, all the information we currently have right now is purely observational according to what may have happened uh, out in the real world where an individual did start off with Johnson & Johnson or even overseas with AstraZeneca and then were given either uh, the Pfizer or the Moderna shot after that. And so we don't, I can't answer that question uh, in, in, in full earnest uh, honesty right now. Uh, however, uh, anecdotally, we can say that uh, it does not appear that it will be particularly dangerous and it has produced a very high antibody response at this time. So Dr. Sneed, now I have to go back to the whole situation where people are still hesitant about getting any vaccine. Uh, some people saying that these pharmaceutical companies, they're just out for money. And especially when it comes to saying you need two shots rather than one and then possibly a third. How do you address those issues of people concerned about, they don't want to get the vaccine, they're concerned about this being forced upon them and particularly knowing that these companies are making so much money. Well, the very first thing I've shared with many people here in our community and all across the entire state of Florida is that we have an enormous amount of oversight uh, beyond, that goes well beyond the pharmaceutical company. Immediately when we heard anything about Pfizer, we heard a very quick pushback from representatives from the FDA, the CDC, and Dr. Fauci and others uh, with the White House. And we're not gonna uh, listen directly to the pharmaceutical company. We're gonna listen to the science and independent review of people of scientists that know exactly what they're looking for, what they're talking about. Talking about. And ultimately, we're gonna look at hardcore data to support whether or not we need a booster. Now, I don't even like the term booster because I do believe that we have ongoing clinical trials right now that would be more of an update to the current vaccines. 
and th that will be a, what we would call um, more genetically uh, aligned with where the current vaccine, I mean, the current viruses are. So we just have to be that's a little bit That's getting fancy, Dr. Sneed. <laughs> Pardon me? That's, that, that's, fancy, that's fancy terminology. The rest of us are just like booster. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I hear I, what I, you're I, saying. Uh, but, but yeah, bo booster, booster to me is not the right word at this current time. The only reason we would get a booster is if we can determine that people have waning antibody levels or if you're immunocompromised or the elderly. Uh, at this current time, we have no evidence to support that. And so we're not going to be driven by a pharmaceutical company to make a decision based upon their data versus what is submitted and reviewed by the FDA. Well, let me ask you this one too, Dr. Sneed. Here's another one. Um, it, it, say you have COVID and you're in the hospital and you're already sick. Can they not give you the vaccine then or is it too late? Well, in the midst of being ill with COVID, especially in the hospital, uh, it is too late. Uh, at that current moment, we are in supportive measures. Uh, you're probably getting a dose of remdesivir. You're probably getting steroids. You may get the monoclonal antibody. What is not going to help you at that moment is actually getting vaccinated uh, at that current time. Uh, and we're hearing that report continue to happen all over the country that people who are about to be intubated are asking for the vaccine at that time, thinking it will save them. It will not. We need about a month and really about a five week period for the full antibodies to really kick in and protect you uh, from, against, against the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And so again, um, uh, if you're hospitalized, uh, probably too late, but immediately upon uh, being released or when you recover, if you have not been hospitalized, uh, we are encouraging people to go and get vaccinated. It will offer a more broad protection for you. Right, right. Okay, so one more question here for you. Um, I'm trying to give you another tough one because uh, you seem to, to have a lot of these answers here. Uh, people still concerned about these different vaccines and what's in them. Let's go back to this mRNA. Uh, people saying mm. that it hasn't been tested in humans. Wh where, where has this been tested in humans? What is it used in? Well, I can tell you right now, uh, it's one of the number one things I have to address all the time. Uh, I want to be very clear with all of our viewers. Messenger RNA technology has been around for over 20 years now. It emanated and started during cancer research. And, um, and really bright scientists said, hey, we can use it to develop vaccines. And vaccine development has been occurring for well over a 15 year period with messenger RNA technology. It is not brand new. It has been tested for years starting back into the early 2010s. But right now, we have uh, the, the pandemic has offered the first But is it used in people right now? Is it, it, but is it used RNA, in, in people? Messenger RNA? You mean, are you, the mRNA, are you the, the one that's in the Pfizer, the, the one that's in the mRNA, the one that's in the Pfizer and the Moderna, because that's different than, what, than what's in the Johnson & Johnson. Because that's what people say, oh, that stuff hasn't been used in human beings. Yeah, messenger RNA technology has been around. It's the first time we have commercially used it at this level. It is not the first vaccine. As a matter of fact, Moderna had a very, very effective Zika vaccine. But Zika went away before it had a chance to come onto the market. It was about 97% effective against the Zika virus. And so people remember that happening and how far back that was. And that was messenger RNA technology. So no, it's not brand new. Uh, and you know what? People, why don't they tell people that? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Well, that's why I'm here talking with you. You know, uh, they haven't had a reporter like you to come out and really ask uh, that particular question to give people like me an opportunity <laughs> to just share that this is not brand new at all. We need people to go out and get vaccinated. We have never had a safer vaccine development than we've had with messenger RNA technology. And, and so far after over 400 million doses given, uh, we now have overwhelming evidence of the safety. There may be a few very, very small, small, small number of people that have very mild adverse effects, but overall there's nothing more dangerous than the Delta variant right now. I have to keep telling people that. The Delta variant, if you are not vaccinated, it will find you. And, and Laverne, give me 10 more seconds about breakthrough. You keep hearing about breakthrough, but you know what? These people are not becoming ill. What you probably will have is a very mild cold that likely will not produce the long COVID effects if you are vaccinated. So there's a big difference between being infected 
and finding the virus in your nose as opposed to having disease and winding up in the hospital or even dying. So we have to make, make a big distinction between being infected and finding it and then being diseased, which is COVID, and actually wind up be, becoming very ill, being hospitalized, having organ damage, or even death. Well, I'm so glad you clarified all of that, Dr. Sneed. And like I said, you really have been able to share with us a lot more insights than, than you hear you know, on a regular basis. And like I said, a lot of people concerned, the, the bottom line is they say, what is being put in my body, right? Which is acceptable for people to wonder. And the fact that people were calling it new technology, but you are clarifying not new technology used in Zika uh, vaccines. Yeah, very Again, quick statement. messaging. And, messenger RNA is running through our body right now. It is part of the natural biochemical makeup of who we are as human beings. And so we have just learned how to harness the bioengineering in our body and ask our body to build a protective army of antibodies against a terrible virus. End of story. Nothing new. Thank you. Thank you so much for that biology lesson. I appreciate it. It was so helpful. I really do appreciate you being so patient with us. Take care.